since the islands and French Guiana depend on France, they are very heavily influenced by French culture. Um, so there are a lot of baguettes and, and things that you might imagine when you think of French culture. Um, but since they um, have a different heritage and they are from the islands, they, they have a lot of their own traditions. Um, since Martinique, Guadeloupe, and French Guiana are dependent on France, they, their culture is heavily influenced by French culture. Um, however, they are very unique in, um, and really do have their own culture. Um, a lot of the things that you could describe uh, their culture by is Creole. Um, it's a very islandy feel. Um, a lot of the food that we ate on the islands um, was a lot of chicken and rice. There was a dish called Colombo, which um, is kind of a, a soup or a stew, I guess you could say. Um, that was usually chicken with potatoes and carrots and things like that and a kind of curry sauce that you would put over rice and it is delicious. Um, but you got to make sure that you get the right members to make it for you because they know how to do their Colombo right. <laughs> um, one of my favorite things that we got to eat as missionaries was made by um, some of the Haitian members and investigators that we had and it is called Banan Pese and it is fried bananas that are cut into um, little diagonals, I guess you could say, that are then squished until they're very thin um, banana patties, I guess you could call them. Um, and then you eat that with fried chicken and um, pickles, which is shredded carrots, cabbage, um, with uh, vinegar and citrus kind of sauce and it is delicious. Ask anyone that has had banana peze and they'll tell you it's their favorite dish. Um, we had a lot of really delicious Brazilian um, meals made for us, lots of fish and rice and amazing sauces. Um, one of the things about the culture in the islands that really touched me was the generosity of everyone that we met. Um, even people that were not interested in accepting us and listening to what we had to share. They would offer us um, cold drinks on a hot day or they would offer us some beignets um, which are little fried donuts I guess you could say. Um, I have a very specific memory of one of the members that we were visiting with, um, Frere Desir. He is from Haiti and he's married to a woman who is from Dominica and they are the most incredible family uh, they live in Guadeloupe and um, they don't have a whole lot temporally. Um, but I remember Frere Desir was, um, he was walking us around his um, garden behind his house. They had lots of animals and, and vegetables growing. And he looked at me and he said, you know, we don't have a lot of things, but we have a lot of people and that's more important. And Brother Desir really helped me learn how important it is to be surrounded with people you love. That at the end of the day, we don't really need a lot to get by, but if we have the support and love of those around us, we can, we can get through any hard time. The French and Belgian people are so funny about what's proper and what's not. Um, there were so many people who opened the door in their underwear. Like, I remember in the summertime, like, so many people, they just opened the door like we had a neighbor upstairs. We made them cookies once, and we knocked on the door, and he opened it in his underwear. He was about a 350-pound guy, and I thought, okay, this is, this is proper for them, but... Um, in terms of etiquette, um, talking loudly is so obnoxious, especially if you're speaking in English. So if you're on the metro, you're on the tram, you're on the bus, if you're speaking, and it's always rude to speak a different language around people who don't understand, but kind of speaking in a softer voice. I remember I got home. I'm normally a very loud person. And I remember when I got home, my family, were, they were like, oh my goodness, like you speak so quietly. Like, like, it's like you're whispering. And I thought, oh wow. And even on my mission, I always thought I was still the loud one, but maybe everyone's just that much softer than me when they speak. Um, and in terms of when you're eating, um, I, maybe I hadn't been invited to many dinner parties beforehand, but I, one thing, one thing that's always a good rule is to kind of follow um, the woman, the, the woman at, of the household and how she eats. Like if you have no idea how to hold whatever forks are in front of you, if you have no idea how, 
um, to spread the cheese that's given, then kind of look to the woman of the household to see her for, I guess, for elders to kind of look at the the gentleman of the house, the, the brother in the house. So the French oh. and Belgian people are so funny. They're all about their days off and they have Catholic holidays spread out all throughout the year. Um, there's the day of Ascension where Mary went up to heaven. There's, you know, so many different holidays where I'm like, is that, is that really in the Bible? Like, okay. Well, they celebrate it, and the French and Belge are huge about their um, vacances, and the vacances is their two-month-off vacation. Um, I was serving in a tiny city in the north of France during vacances, and none of the buses ran. We actually had to get a car because there were just no buses, um, especially on the weekends. Um, and people, like some people, like didn't want to go to church on vacances. They're like, oh, were you going? but it's vacation. And I thought, no, we're going to church. And a lot of them go to the south of France. So you might lose members of your bishopric for two months. Um, you might lose, you know, your ward mission leader for a few weeks, but you know, we do that in America too. So that's totally understandable. And, um, some people, their vacances is just closing their blinds and staying inside. And I just thought that was so great. Um, another custom is there, and this is more predominant in the smaller smaller villes, the smaller cities, but the um, siesta, which is kind of a little nap they take in the afternoon from 12 to 2. And I really only noticed it when I was serving in a really small city in France. Um, and we'd knock on the door and people would say, oh, it's, this is a sacred, these are sacred hours for me. Like, I don't talk during these times. I only nap. I thought that was so cute. You know, a lot of stores had closed down. Like there was a nice sandwich shop we liked, but if we wanted lunch there, we'd have to go there either before 12 or after two because they'd closed down for the siest. Um, but in the bigger cities like Paris, you know, Paris, you know, doesn't sleep. Paris is, well, that's not true. Paris sleeps, but Paris is just going and they don't take their little nap and they don't in Belgium either. And I think that's mostly because of the influx of different cultures and other cultures are like, what? No. We're good. We'll, we'll work during those hours. <laughs> so the Belgian culture and the French culture um, are th similar but very different all at the same time. Um, the French make fun of the Belgians and the Belgians make fun of the French all day long. <laughs> so whenever you serve in France and you go up to Belgium, they make fun of your French accent when you speak French. Um, and then when you're in Belgium and you pick up on a lot of their a lot of, I guess you could say a lot of their mannerisms you go down into France and they make fun of you joking around that you're some Belgium missionary um, it's it's pretty funny they they have a really good humor in between them um, but the the culture between the two of them I would I didn't I didn't notice too big of a culture difference um, but I'm, I've talked to plenty of people that they say that the culture difference is huge. Um, then again, it it probably just depends on where you serve in Belgium as well. Um, because being the fact that Belgium is kind of split in half in a sense, where it's the Flemish side, and then you have the French side as well. So there, there's just a lot of culture in Belgium, a ton of it. And so I feel like a lot of the the pure Belgium culture, it's hard to find. I feel like a lot of it is just a mix. It's kind of like, I guess you could say Brussels is kind of like New York City in a sense, where you have, I don't know, when, when we were there, on average, we would run into um, probably five, or, five to seven languages a day just going out and talking to people on the street. You'd run into Spanish, Portuguese, um, Dutch, German, um, French, obviously, and then you'd run into Polish, fin Finnish, like um, Swiss. You, you just run into any, anything. It's actually really weird a lot of the time, um, which kind of limits your, your contacting pool a little bit. But that's just, and I say that just to, to give you an idea about how diverse the the culture is over there so i feel like the the french have a more rounded culture now um where they they the french are extremely prideful um and i i don't and i i don't say that in a bad way either um i say that in a very um how do you say that i guess you could say humble way 
it's kind of weird to mix the two. But I say that because of the fact that they're very prideful about their French, uh, their being French. Um, they are they are very happy to be French, and they will they none of them would ever want to be anything different. Um, they 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 are extremely proud of of their food and how they eat and how good it is and how long they spend at the table. So reunion is kind of like a melting pot of the Indian Ocean. There's people there's race people from not a ton of people from Africa, but there's some and there's islands in between Africa and Madagascar called Mayotte and Comore that like that people and so people from those islands come to reunion and people from Madagascar come to reunion and there's people from India and China and they all a lot of well mainly people from Madagascar and those I other islands come to reunion so that their children can have good education because the, the French culture there is probably the best in the Indian Ocean and so so it's just this huge melting pot of people, and I really love the, because the, there is racism, but it's not a ton, because like, um, people are just very open, it's like, you do your own thing, I do my own thing, like, we can work well together, and, and people just, I don't know, it's, it's just a very loving, open culture, and I, I really admire that, and it's kind of fun being on this, especially reunion, because you get the best of the French culture, like European French culture, traditional French culture, and then the island, like Caribbean laid back, and which is interesting. It's an interesting duo, but I really liked it. And something I love, I think it's more it's more of a French thing, but they they do the the two cheek um, kisses the when they greet each other and I I love that because I just felt like it was just so personal like we, we couldn't do it with the men but we do it with all the sisters and I I just love that and I, I, I wish they do it in America because it's just it's just so personal and like hello let me greet you with my cheeks <laughs> well the French people are very blunt and so if you're there's uh, it's not a ton of things, but if they, if you're doing something that's not proper, they'll tell you. They'll they'll let you know very bluntly, and it, sometimes it's it's good, and sometimes it's very embarrassing. But it's it's life, you know. So because it's like a melting pot of all different type kinds of people, there's a ton of religions, and so there's like the in um like Muslim traditions and because they have the Ramadan and and then there's Melba which is from like India and so they do these crazy parades where they wear like all colors and they sacrifice animals and um, and then you have like the the more like Chinese holidays that they celebrate there but for the most part it's they celebrate Christmas and and Easter and stuff and actually the Catholic Church is huge the Catholic Church just kind of like reigns <laughs> on reunion everyone's Catholic except for everyone who's not Catholic but um, yeah so all the traditional holidays but because but because the the summer is the time when we normally have winter um, I love Christmas because we have barbecues and fireworks and it's just a little bit opposite of what we normally conceive as Christmas. So France is a melting pot, which means people do recognize that people are coming from different cultures, different sets of etiquette, and yet France also appreciates if you're coming to my country, enjoy my culture, enjoy my etiquette. And you don't have to assert the fact of I am not French unless you you are French, um, but rather appreciating, it's good to appreciate their culture and their etiquette. Just little things like you put your hands above the table at all times. In, in America, if you're not actively eating, you always put your hands below the table and that's what's polite. But in France, you always keep your hands on the table. And sometimes you like rest your, your hands right on the wrist, right there on the table. 
um, when you are uh, when you are meeting people, you don't have to be as loud. <laughs> um, it's something that you learn that your ears get better the longer you live in France because people talk more quietly. They aren't so loud, so brash as Americans are. And I know there are other countries that are even louder than us. Um, I, I was companions with a newer missionary and I had told him, okay, you don't have to be so loud. It's kind of startling how loud you are on the street. Maybe when you say hello, say it a little more softly. And I promised him, okay, if you, if you say bonjour and you say it nice and softly, then they will still hear you. The French have super ears. That's like their superpower. And uh, the next day we were walking across this bridge that over a train station and this this girl was walking the other other direction and he said to her bonjour and she responded bonjour and just kind of kept walking and once she was out of or at least what he thought was out of earshot she, he turned to me and said it worked they heard me and i said yeah you can even go half that volume still um, so the french have super ears and just being willing to adapt and embrace those little little parts of culture is so useful because you're you're learning what it is to be French. Um, in the Bible, Paul talks about when I'm with the Jews, I am as a Jew. When I'm with the Gentiles, I am as the Gentiles. And adopting that kind of attitude in ourselves and saying, when I'm in France, I become French. And doing that helps you not just connect with them so you don't offend them, but it helps you understand who they are and how they act. And doing all of this helps you connect with them so much better. And when you connect to people, they're so much more likely to accept, accept your message. I remember hearing once a story where, I don't remember where it happened, it wasn't in my mission, but some missionaries were in a rural country and they were going up and down mountains and they knocked on a woman's door and she let them in because they had polished shoes. And I was hearing this story and one of the, one of the missionaries who was listening to the story as well said, well, that's stupid. Like polished shoes don't matter. Like I, I she, she almost indicating she didn't deserve the truth because her priority was whether your shoes are polished or not. But in my mind, there are very few people who will be offended by you trying to present yourself well. Um, and the same thing with the French, who really appreciate it when you, when you dress well, when you wear clothes that are clearly French and not American. Um, so no one's going to be offended if you try to dress well, but some people may, be, may reject you just because you don't seem French enough. And to me, Yes, it's pride that someone would do that. Um, I don't think the majority of people would do that. But who's to say that someone who's prideful doesn't deserve the gospel as much as someone who is humble? Um, just because one is more likely to accept the gospel under any circumstances doesn't make their value as a soul greater than another's. Um, one time I was in a ward with multiple missionaries and there was one, one member that a lot of the missionaries didn't exactly like. She, she was very wealthy and very classy and loved to, and was kind of showy. She liked to kind of put on a show and have fun. And uh, some of the missionaries felt like she wasn't as real, that she wasn't as sincere because this was her way of being. In my mind, she deserves love. She deserves truth just as much as anyone else. And I think that so often we say, oh, don't judge anyone. And in the process, we then turn around and judge people who judge others. Where really, when it comes down to it, we're all brothers and sisters. Kind of the, the slogan or motto of France is brotherhood, equality, and liberty. And I think that brotherhood is something that we can really adopt more and understand that people are coming from different perspectives. Everyone has different faults. And just because someone has a fault that you disagree with, whether it be pride, or whether it be sloppiness, or whether it be 
uh, a bad temper or whether it be someone who won't stand up for themselves. A lot of times we kind of defend the people who have our similar faults and then totally ignore the people who have faults that we see as greater. Whereas really, it's all about brotherhood. So I think embracing both the nuance of people who are counter their own culture, as well as embracing people, trying to embrace the culture ourselves, trying to connect with everyone. It's really hard to summarize French culture because there's so many rich aspects of it. It has had centuries, or really millennia, to develop a, cult, a culinary, linguistic, architectural, artistic, um, political, religious culture that, that it's hard to kind of summarize it and say this is how the French people are because all of those aspects are so richly developed and so beautiful that it's hard to kind of summarize them all. I, I'd say definitely appreciating that depth, uh, appreciating where they come from and where where they are currently. Americans tend to be very attached to the past. We see a building back from the early 1800s and we say, wow, that's ancient and that's incredible and oh, how beautiful. And the French do appreciate their, their historical um, architecture, their historical pieces of art, but they also embrace what is new. For them, they are surrounded by what is old and they appreciate it and they love it, but they don't let it get in the way of appreciating what can we do new with this? What new pieces of art, new methods of communication, new everything. Um, so it's this beautiful marriage of old and new. Um, and I, I do agree that understanding their culture really does help us connect with them and learning to appreciate it in a way that maybe we aren't used to appreciating culture. For instance, for their religious history, France has had a very abusive history with religion, um, where people with religious power took advantage of the people. And I, I don't want to say anything bad about any particular religion, because I do believe that the majority of people working in a religion were doing good. When you, when you see those beautiful cathedrals, when you see those small village chapels, don't, don't think of them as a religion that's wrong because there is so much that is right in those churches as well. There's so much that is good. Um, when you walk in, think that no matter what the circumstances were compelling the people to build those, those beautiful edifices, to recognize as well that they did it generally out of a loyalty to God, that they did the best they could, and really the best they could was incredible, to build structures where they could worship, where they could let God into, the, into their lives. There is so much symbolism in the cathedrals. Um, they, it, it's incredible. Um, and yet despite Despite all of these good efforts from so many wonderful people, Catholic or Protestant or other, um, they were abused by religion. There were enough people in power in religious organizations that did not respect the wonderful sacrifices they were making. And as such, the French people suffered by the hand of religion. That is where the secular movement came from. Uh, the, the several French revolutions that have happened since the big French revolution have really attested to France's desire to no longer be abused, to no longer be manipulated by religion. Um, and as such, going in as a missionary, when you're thinking of it strictly in religious organization terms, it, it is, it's scary because a lot of times people will then see you as, okay, you're wearing a name badge with a specific church. You carry ecclesiastical authority with you. As such, um, I, I don't want to be abused by you. I don't want to be manipulated by you. Um, and there is that aspect to it for sure. But like, like I, I said in an earlier clip, I... I see so much of the French people it grow, a desire growing in them 
to connect with something greater with them. They're, they're a little wary of religion being the source of teaching them how to connect. But really, when it comes down to it, our membership in the church isn't about belonging to a large organization. Um, rather, our membership in the church is all about helping us learn how to individually and as families connect to God and how to let God enter our personal and family lives. And I think taking that approach is so much more effective with French people because they know that they can control their life. They know that they can, con they can control their home. And when you just allow them to say, here are some principles, try applying them, see if they work, it's so much more effective than trying to exert any authority or even loyalty to a church. A loyalty to a church will come with time. Um, when people start to realize that so many true principles that help them individually and as families come from a divine source of a church, then they will feel that loyalty to it. But let, but give them time. Don't, don't say you have to know that the church is true before you can even start applying the principles. Let them apply the principles. So one, uh, one last thing I think of that maybe is a difference between French and American culture to keep in mind is the difference of freedom of religion. Um, in the United States, freedom of religion is the freedom to practice your religion, the freedom to um, not let someone else dictate how to act in your religion. In France, because of their bad history of religious abuse, freedom of religion is more freedom from religion. It is freedom from letting a religion control you, uh, freedom from a religion dictating you or influencing you. So when sometimes Americans see certain French laws that come into play or come up as options, um, like banning burqas in schools or other things that we see as oppressive religiously, they see as defending their right to not let someone impose their religion. And it's a very different mentality. It's one that um, that Americans do have a hard time accepting. And not even that you have to accept it as your own belief, but the idea that they are approaching religion from a different point of view. And it's something to just keep in mind that helps you understand why people react to you as a missionary the way they do. It's because they are defending that right to not let a religion abuse them like it has in the past. Etiquette, cultural do's and don'ts, well, when you go to France, and Switzerland even, don't act like an American, I suppose. <laughs> don't act like a tourist. Um, be very respectful, very, very respectful. They're a wonderful people. I love the French people. They're very to the point. They'll call stupid out when they see it. You know, that's the kind of people they are, and I like that. They're more, more philosophical. Um, here in America, we have a lot of math and science and a lot of engineers and such. In France, it's a lot more, there's a lot more emphasis on philosophy and rhetoric and literature and such. So the people know how to talk and they know how to, um, how to talk to you as well. When we would go out contacting in France, we would try and make the person as comfortable as possible with us before we actually started talking about anything that had to do with religion or anything deep. Um, once, once you get a French person really comfortable with you and, and on talking terms with you, you can talk to them about pretty much anything. And they won't sugarcoat anything either. They'll tell you exactly what they think about it. You know, if it's religion, they might tell you, yeah, I don't like it. You know, I think that people made it up and that it has caused more grief than good. They'll tell you that. And then it's your job to kind of, to bring in the gospel, you know, from our perspective, to bring in the Book of Mormon maybe. Uh, but it's, I love the French people. I, I love them so much. Church was always incredibly interesting because um, everybody was themselves at church. Nobody wore masks. They were themselves um, just as much at church as just during their normal lives. They came and and they brought their personalities with them. And that was always really fun. And I admire how the French people work with each other like that. You know, they they work with different personalities almost flawlessly. You know? And if people get offended, they talk about it, they get over it. Either that or there's a huge feud. 
you know. So I, I, you get the extremes as well. It's either one or the other, but it's that's what makes it interesting. Their culture is very, very rich. They've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of existence. And with that comes a ton of history and a ton of culture. And you can see it just by walking through the cities. I mean, a lot of the buildings that you'll come across in France are older than America. You know, most of the cathedrals in France are hundreds of years older than America is. The French people really like it when you try to learn as much as you can about their history and their culture. I think that's just as much a part of missionary work as testifying of the gospel and teaching about the gospel. Because you don't want to go to France and be seen as just some American trying to spread his or her cult, you know. Because that's what they think of missionaries a lot of times. You want to be thought of as somebody who's going to France to learn about the culture and the people. Um, and then who has a message to share, to share at the same time. One of my favorite things to do was just walk around. You know, go to the open air markets, talk to people, um, ask questions about the culture, visit the museums, walk around the cathedrals. Do that as much as you can if you're going to France on your mission, or really anywhere in Europe. Because the more you know the culture and the more you know about the history of the region you're in and the history of the country, the more you'll understand where the people are coming from and why they have, why they think the way they do, you know, why they have these traditions, this way of thinking. Um, you can't separate the work from the people. The two go together. And you have to really emphasize both and work on both and learn more about both. We celebrated Christmas, Noel, um, but for the French, they celebrate normally around on Christmas Eve. They have a big party, a huge dinner, and um, so Christmas Day isn't as important, I guess. But yeah, you celebrate Christmas. We celebrated Easter. Um, celebrated a lot of Catholic holidays um, that they get the day off from work. And so that's one thing to, <laughs> to recognize is that they have a lot of holidays and <laughs> it's just sometimes to a ridiculous extent, like people are always off of work and are always on holiday. So they weren't going to be there if you wanted to teach them, but let's see. So Christmas, Easter, they didn't, Halloween is much less celebrated. They did celebrate it, but not by the same standards as Americans. And Valentine's Day is only for people who are in love. It's not for like friends and stuff to celebrate and like for you to give a Valentine to like, I don't know, somebody in the ward is just like you're in love with them. So it's like, don't do that when you're out there not talking to people and uh, public transportation. That was one thing that was really hard for me to adjust to just because you're a missionary. So you're not going, you're not going to listen to that. Like you still have to contact people, um, especially on buses or trams. <laughs> the people can't get away. So you just, um, and they won't, they won't talk to you. Like nobody talks to each other in those public transportations. They just keep to themselves. But as a missionary, you have to. And so I know one way that I, I tried to play it cool by just like, you know, you sit by them and then just like, you know, how's your day today? And they're like, it's good. And <laughs> sometimes if they saw your badge, then they're just like, Oh no, no, no. Like they just, they would, they would not talk to you, but you know, if they didn't see your badge, sometimes they would just like keep talking to you and um, then you just start talking to them and then they're like, oh, why are you, you know, where are you from? And then you tell them and then they're like, oh, why are you here? Are you just doing a, a internship or just studying abroad? And like, actually, you know, you like have your Book of Mormon and you, you know, you contact them and they respect you a lot more for it. Um, than they would have if you just walked up to them and said, like, do you want to learn more about Jesus Christ? Uh, but that's one way that I try to work with public transportation and contacting. Um, there's still, I still get anxious just thinking about it <laughs> because that was, that was a rough, that was a rough thing in my mission. 
in France, they don't have air conditioning as often in, in uh, their homes. So they'll usually kind of manage their blinds and with, you know, the sun rising and setting to um, control the climate in their house, either opening or closing windows, um, letting in sunlight or not. Um, uh, not as many people have computers, uh, so they'll go to internet cafes to use computers. Um, they don't have washing machines as often or dishwashers. I don't think we ever had a dishwasher on my mission. Um, only a few apartments of mine had washing machines, so we would, oh sorry, only a few apartments had dryers. So we would always wash our clothing and then we had to air dry it. They had little racks that you'd hang your clothing on. And a lot of French people do that as well. They have, hang, you know, they'll hang it outside their window like you kind of see in movies. Um, a lot of people, they will have their gardens out their window hanging on a little ledge or whatever that they set up. and Because they don't, they're all in these big apartment complexes and they don't have garden spaces. Um, they'll usually do grocery shopping it's kind of changing to be more like the US. They used to do it every day, but now they're more, um, it's becoming less of a regular thing, but they'll usually go and pick up fresh bread each day. Um, everybody will go to their butcher shop or their bread shop. Um, they have pharmacies everywhere you go. So here it's kind of hard. You have to look for a pharmacy. Um, in France, they have pharmacies on every street, every corner. They have hair cutteries everywhere. And so it's just part of their life that you're out and about. In the U.S., it's kind of like we do our thing, we go to work, we come home, and then we set up social gatherings. But in France, it's kind of like everywhere you do go, everything you do is social. Um, and you see people and you get to know them. Um, everybody, well, so many people take public transportation. It's cheaper in France. They don't usually buy phone plans. Um, they'll buy phones and then they'll pay by the minute or by the hour or whatever. So say I bought 30 minutes or I bought five hours for the week. And so it's kind of, they don't have like a monthly plan that they pay for. Um, Yeah, they don't work as much. Um, they get a lot more holidays. I think it's like 35 hour work weeks, not 40. I, I think they might do 40, but they definitely get a lot more holidays um, than we do and a lot more days off of work than we do, that they celebrate and that they do. Um, in school, kids go to school longer. They go from like I think eight or nine in the morning until five in the afternoon, in the evening. And um, they do get, at least in some places that I went, I think it was all over France, they get a half day on like Wednesdays where they end at like 12. Um, and so they just have like a different sort of view on, on how to school as well. I know that in school you're expected to never talk. You sit and you listen. Um, people, when they would learn English, it was a lot more writing oriented, not speaking oriented. So a lot of French people are very good at writing, um, a lot are very good at understanding, but that they have trouble speaking. But most French people know to, how to speak at least a little bit of English. Um, they also love American music and so everywhere you go you'll hear American songs They would have their a few famous French people that that you would hear the music there of the day But you know in America you never hear French songs There's maybe one or two that people there's a few nowadays that Americans see and they understand or that they they look up and they hear about but in France American music is huge so those are the only big things about culture and lifestyle um, vacations and holidays that I can think of. French are extremely, a lot of, like I said, a lot of their social life revolves around the table. And so your manners around the table are extremely important. Um, so I guess the advice I would say was, would be to 
do whatever anybody else around the table is doing. Um, so if for, first off, don't put your elbows on the table um, and don't put your elbows out um, because as Americans, we like to we tend to eat a little bit kind of like this where our elbows are have about two feet of space on each side of us and we end up rubbing elbows with the person next to us. Um, in France, that is um, extremely disrespectful. Um, keep, keep your elbows by your sides and that's you just eat with a, eat with a fork and a knife too. Um, cutting, cutting things with your fork is not polite over there at all. And so you have a fork and a, and a knife. They have it there for a reason. So you 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 cut it with one with one hand. You, you stick it you stick it with your fork with the other hand. Um, and always 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 chew with your mouth closed. Um, those I would say those are the three biggest things um, that a lot of missionaries have trouble with: is eating with a fork and a knife, your elbows, and chewing with your mouth closed. As, as sad as it is, but it's really the, the biggest problem that a lot of, of, uh, of Americans, they run into problems with. Um, so French people are very particular about themselves. <laughs> um, they don't like anybody getting into their life whatsoever if they don't know them or if they don't have an, a chance to get to know them. So the biggest thing I would say um, to, to understand the French culture is first off, just be their friend to start off. Um, if you see somebody on the street and you you really like their shoes, that's your number one go-to to get into the conversation. Um, you stop them like, hey, I really like your shoes. Where'd you get your shoes? You know, you 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 talk you talk about them. They love we as people in general, not just the French, as Americans, as as human beings, we love to talk about ourselves. We absolutely love it, and. Um, so if you can always get them talking about themselves all the time. Um, so, for example, you, you start by getting into their shoes, okay? And then you ask, okay, well, where would I, where would I get some? Do you know where I could find some? Because those are really cool. I like them. And I'm not, just in, I'm not just in this missionary or this suit and tie all day, for example. Um, and you, you get talking and then, they, they, and then you say, okay, well, how long have you been here? Like, do you know the area where I can find the stores? Um, and they'll say, oh, well, I've been here for this amount of time. And you say, okay, well, do you like it here? Like, I just got here. Um, and then you, it's, it's kind of like a domino effect. You just got to find how you like to go about doing it. Um, but the way I did it, I, I started off just talking about them, something that they had on, the, their bike that they had, the bag that they were wearing, something like that. And then um, from there, I'd go from there to how long they were here to how long I was here. And then they'd ask, really, what are you doing over here? They're like, oh, yeah, I'm American. Like, dude, you're stupid if you're over here, if you're an American. Like, go back to America. France sucks. That's what a lot of them will say, actually. Um, and then that's when you're just like, oh, no, I love France. I'm actually here. I've been here for this amount of time. Like, I've been to this city, this city, and this city. Um, and I really love the French people. And they're just like, you're crazy. Like, they'll look at you. The, the, like, they'll give you the weird look. Like, dude, you're nuts. Um, and... <laughs> And then that's when you can, that's when you're just like, okay, well, hey, like my name, or if you haven't already introduced yourself, you say, my name is this. And you go on to say, well, you know what? I'm actually here to, because I know that this has changed my life, that this gospel or this knowledge about whatever you want to share um, has changed my life. And that's why I've been to this city. I've been to this city. That's why I'm here talking to you right now, actually. And if you go about it the right way and and you don't go about it just too directly too strongly um they'll they'll really enjoy that and they'll either agree with you or not obviously but the french people have i like to look at their them as people as having guard dogs watchtowers barbed wire and the whole the whole thing you know and you just have to get through all that by asking certain questions that doesn't that don't feel threatening to them and once you're in you're in if you if you can become a french person's friend they're your friend for life
Okay, French culture. Um, I'll start with fashion. Um, French fashion is is so great. Um, you'll see that it's different in different areas. In Paris and in bigger cities, it's a lot more what you think of when you think of French fashion. Everyone's really well dressed and really well tailored in their clothing. Um, but in smaller towns, kind of like in America, um, smaller towns, it's less important. You'll see people that will just wear more regular clothes and not really care that much. Um, but in in Paris or in Rennes or the bigger cities, um, the fashion is important. And scarves, scarves are huge. Um, in America, I feel like we wear scarves when our neck is cold or when it's during the winter, or maybe sometimes girls will wear a scarf as a, an accessory. But in France, if you can see someone's neck sometimes, it's like, what? You should have a scarf on. What are you doing? And guys, guys wear scarves a lot too. It's just as important for them to wear scarves as it is for girls. Um, Well-tailored suits are a must. So that was a really good part of going to church um, or just being in a more business area of, of Paris. Um, shoes are, are important. Um, bags. Also with French culture, um, you need to address someone as madame. Um, like you wouldn't just stop someone on the street and say, hey, how are you? Or like, hey, what's up? You have to address them with the correct title. And I had learned that um, the French parliament, they had just gone over whether or not, at what point you can start calling someone madame instead of mademoiselle. Um, so it's like really official and you have a lot of respect for, the, for older people. And you'll see that in the French language because there's the two and the vous. Um, and so in English, we just say you, whether or not you're two years old or 30 years old or 80 years old. But in France, you use vous with anyone that's older than you or anyone that's in a more um, higher position. So any of your teachers or your parents' friends, you just use vous as a general thing until you're at a comfortable place with someone um, on a friendship level or a peer, then you'll start using two. And so that's something that was good in the MTC. They only taught us the VU. And in our mission, our mission president, um, I had two mission presidents and they're both French. So they both were pretty, they knew French really well. And they made it very clear that we should only be using VU. And to me, that was really nice because I just used VU with with everything, but it kind of got bad because I'd VU, I'd use VU to children, which I shouldn't be doing because I'm higher than a two-year-old in the the rankings and so I would I would vouvoir, um little kids and they wouldn't understand because they they had only been ever addressed as two and so that was a really big important thing in the French culture also kissing kissing um in America when we hear French kissing we think of other things but in France you have to kiss people um you do the whole cheek thing and it's it's a must. When f even if you don't know someone, you greet them with a kiss. And so when we would be at church or at someone's house and other people would walk in, we wouldn't even know who they were. We wouldn't say, hi, my name is Emily, or you wouldn't say, hi, my name is Frank. You would just give them a kiss on the cheek and then you would continue to move on. Um, and also in France with the kissing, there's different amounts of kisses in different areas. Um, and then also I know that in Strasbourg, in the east of France, they start on the left of the cheek instead of on the right, which threw me off a lot because I had been used to starting with the right cheek. Um, and so you don't really give people hugs to greet them or high five or anything or to say goodbye. You, you kiss them on the cheek, but not with like you're you know, not with your lips. It's more like a cheek to cheek thing. So that is really important. In France, sometimes I think people think that families are a bit more cold in that um, they're not as warm and nurturing. But I saw kind of a mix. I saw people that were really, really hands-on and really loving and touchy-feely with their children. And other people that you wouldn't ever touch your child and if your child was crying, 
you wait till they're done crying. Um, so that's kind of different. There's different parenting techniques. Um, also in France, mealtime is really important. Meals can last hours and every night you eat dinner with your family. Um, it's a it's a time for them to talk together and to exchange um, how their day went, and also they eat late. In America, I'd say that the average dinner time for most families are between like five and seven, whereas in France, most of the families would start their meal after seven and would even start at nine o'clock. And so that was hard as a missionary because that kind of would fill up our night too much. And so we had certain rules about that with meal times. Um, but meals are really important. They really like to eat together and to talk together. And it's not just you sit down at the table and eat and then you go off and do your own thing. You sit down and you talk and you get to know each other. And it's really great. And I think that's in that I like to implement. Impl impl what's that called? Implement. I like to implement that into my family. 